Well, this is exciting, our first uh, Empathy Trainers Salon. So I put together a slideshow. Oh, I better hit the timer, too. I'll be keeping time on this. I want to be sure we don't go over our 10 minutes. And let me actually bring up my presentation slideshow, my first uh, slideshow. Let me see. Does that show up for everybody? Yes. Oh, great. So this is my first uh, Google slideshow here that I've put together. And what I wanted to present was uh, not just the, the trainings that I do, but how did I get to this point where I feel that we need a empathy uh, training curriculum? So this is like uh, Edwin Rutsch, Empathy Salon presentation, who am I and how did I get here? And I am Edwin Rutsch, the uh, director of the Center for Building a Culture of Empathy. And let me see. Here I gotta get to figure out how to move these slides forward. And so about ten years ago, I was uh, making documentaries. I, I considered myself a, a seeker. And I was making documentaries about human values. And uh, about eight years ago, I stumbled across the uh, value of empathy. And this is me out in the Sierra Nevadas, which I like to go backpacking. Uh, and do videotaping up there as well. And what I came across was uh, Barack Obama was running his uh, campaign, and he kept talking about uh, empathy. He would say, "There's a, you know, there's, he says there's a lot of talk about the federal deficit, but what we should talk about more is our empathy deficit." So he talked about empathy over and over again. And then I was reading the work of George Lakoff, who's a linguist in, at uh, UC Berkeley, and he was saying, well, empathy is core to progressive values, and, and uh, America was founded on this moral system uh, base, which starts with empathy. So I said, hmm, well, empathy looks like it's pretty important. And then the more I looked into uh, Barack Obama's and his campaign, I just saw over and over and over again he was... Uh, talking about the importance of empathy, and he, he's mentioned it to date about uh, maybe 80, 90 times in his, in his different speeches and interviews and, and uh, just talks that he's given. So I said, well, I'll make a documentary about empathy, and I started the cultureofempathy.com uh, website, which is a real cornucopia, has grown into a cornucopia of resources on empathy. And I created, started creating a social media community, which now has about 26,000 Facebook members. And also created a Scoop It, uh, which is a way of curating articles uh, on the internet. And uh, there's now about 6,000 articles with 15 different subtopics on empathy in animals, empathy in, in the family, and human-centered design, and justice. Uh, in uh, training, so there's a wide variety of subtopics uh, there too on empathy, and then Barack Obama wins. Great, now what? <laughs> <laughs> so the Obama campaign, the uh, Obama for America, they held a uh, you know like a town hall here in, in the Berkeley area, and they said, "Come share your ideas about uh, what issues do you want to talk about? You know, what should we work on?" I said. And a couple of us came, we had flyers about empathy, and we said, well, Barack Obama's talked about empathy, let's work on empathy. And they said, who are you? It's like, what do you want here? We don't, we don't know anything about empathy. Is, uh, you know, we want the real issues, health care and all that kind of, and the war in Iraq, and all these kind of standard issues that everybody talks about. But they didn't understand the moral uh, issue of empathy and how to foster it. And I now realize we really needed a comprehensive empathy curriculum at that time already that the, Brock, the Obama campaign needed that for tr training their uh, supporters, that they never got training. So there was a real disconnect between Obama's rhetoric and the grassroots uh, organizing. So I went along and started uh, with the, for the documentary, started recording uh, empathy expert interviews. And I've done about 300 uh, so far, and they're at least one-hour interviews. And these are just some of the people I interviewed. And I did empathy in philosophy uh, and science uh, interviews, uh, interviewed neuroscientists, 
you know, the home, family, parenting, and educators, even more home, family, you know, and educators, so quite a few uh, did uh, interfaith. Uh, there was Houston Smith, who was kind of the founder, you know, really kind of kicked off the whole interfaith uh, world religions movement, and uh, have interviewed, done panel discussions with interfaith uh, panel discussions as well, talking about empathy and you know with Muslims and Christians and Buddhists, empathy and animal experts like Franz Duval, who talks about empathy and evolution and in animals and empathy in business, conflict mediation, people like uh, Johann Galtung who says peace is resolving conflict with empathy uh, without violence and, and with creativity as a never-ending process and healthcare, human-centered design, so a really wide variety of uh, experts I've been interviewing online. And I also uh, went to the streets, so interviewed people out on the streets at de demonstrations. You know, people were like screaming and yelling at each other, throwing things. I said, tell me about empathy. What's the role of empathy in this demonstration? And went to the uh, Tea Party, had their rallies, and I interviewed the Tea Party members, say, yeah, tell me about empathy. What's the role? Yeah, we were for empathy, they would say. And then to the Democrat and Republican uh, conventions, we set up some home empathy discussion groups here in my home to the and then that grew into our first uh, empathy cafe workshop where we uh, were talking about what why do we need empathy in healthcare and uh, we had uh, really good uh, feedback but our organizing team kind of blew up with everybody pissed off at each other. Uh, because we ourselves didn't have real good empathy uh, mediation skills. I didn't even know about really about empathic listening at that time. So it would have been really handy again at that time to have already had a, you know, a really good empathy curriculum that we could have gone through instead of kind of hit or miss, kind of learning it uh, on the fly bit by bit. So then I said, well, we need a real empathy movement. And there was the Occupy Wall Street in Berkeley. So uh, I took the empathy, created an empathy tent, called it the 100% empathy tent. So it wasn't, you know, against, we weren't against anybody. We were for, you know, bringing everybody together. And it was for empathic listening, mediation, dialogue circles, uh, art, and uh, the problem that I found there was that standard circle process had its limitations, that it just didn't work in that because people would kind of dominate the discussions. And there was also very few trained, committed, and grounded empathy supporters. And it seemed like we just didn't have the right tools to really uh, turn around a, 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 an encampment which was just really dysfunctional. I mean, that was the second day I was there, there was a knife fight. and. Yeah, it was like pretty pretty intense. Uh, so again, I really feel that having a comprehensive empathy training curriculum at that time would have been immensely uh, helpful. And then eventually the police did close down the, the camp and that was just a scene from our tent. We had a bunch of, a lot of people came by and you know, we had a lot of fun there, but it helped I think a lot of people. So then got into, we we needed uh, to develop tools and uh, I started uh, online with uh, creating like these empathy circles to develop some tools and they were based on Carl Rogers uh, empathic listening work and worked with Levi Niesink we started these empathy circles and we had see oops so we facilitated probably, you know, 100, 200 empathy circles online. And uh, we do empathic listening. We're kind of using this as a platform for uh, developing uh, tools and processes for facilitating empathy. And then we started uh, in-person empathy cafes. So here in Berkeley, we would meet in a cafe. We'd have maybe 12, you know, 14 people and we'd break up into uh, small groups and do empathic listening. And, we, and uh, that worked, you know, it worked okay, but it didn't really build a community and, and uh, 
and a real commitment uh, for people to really stay. So we're still needing more more tools. And then also did some restorative empathy circles with Republicans and Democrats, uh, mediated some with, like that's Joan Blades, uh, co-founder of MoveOn.org, and had some Republicans and, and had them uh, do empathic listening empathy circles together. And I still wanted to kick, start, kick off this empathy movement, so started an empathy tent uh, at UC Berkeley, the uh, home of the free speech movement. I was saying there's free speech, but nobody's listening. We need a free empathy movement. But uh, and you know we did empathy circles. I uh, did some empathy circle there, but but still we needed something more comprehensive. You know, it's just the empathy circles themselves is just not a, enough. I think we need a larger, more comprehensive approach. And then uh, started learning some more tools, uh, human-centered design. So. That's a process that uh, has empathy at the core, saying that if you design anything, you need, to, uh, you need to empathize with the people you're designing for. So started doing some empathy teams. We did our first one uh, just designing how could we be, have more empathy in the world. The second team, we were doing how to increase empathy in business. Uh, then third team, we were designing the empathy tent. How do we design an empathy tent for Berkeley and empathy in the family was another couple and then we did some, so I've done about 10 of these uh, uh, courses on human-centered design and how do we prove empathy circles and then a workshop trying to facilitate uh, merge empathy circles and human-centered design. And then I'm still like a diehard, we got to have this empathy movement. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, and the Occupy was an us and them movement, even though it's 99 against the 1%. As soon as you get us and them, I think it's a downhill. So I was trying to start kickstart a we're all in it together empathy movement. And, you know, we'd set it up in downtown Berkeley. That's right there at the BART station, 15,000 people, you know, goes through that BART station and they go to the campus. And, uh, you know, we had, you know, people were interested, but still there wasn't, somehow it wasn't creating that engagement and that support. And I really feel that we needed a comprehensive empathy training program was really needed to, you know, get people involved and get them really trained to be, uh, to understand the, the, the uh, issue better. So that brings us to the present uh, where we have the empathy trainer salon. This is uh, how we kind of got here is I really come to the point where I'm saying we need uh, how about how might we design a comprehensive empathy training curriculum uh, the world needs it and really excited to uh, hear everybody's uh, presentations about uh, how we can go about doing that so that is it so we see we went over a little bit so uh, we've got about uh, 10 minutes for Q&A. Can I start with the first question? Yep, please. Hi, Edwin. Hi, everybody. Firstly, Edwin, I want to thank you so much, not only for this salon that you and Juan have organized so beautifully in such short time, but really for your sustained and tireless effort to bring attention to the need for empathy in our midst. And I am in awe sitting here watching the story as it has unfolded for you the last eight years. I'm mostly struck, of course, by your, your persistent willingness <laughs> to restart that empathy tent. Wow. <laughs> so three cheers for Edwin. Hip hip hooray. Hooray. Hip hip hooray. Way to go, Edwin. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> so uh, th that's really what I wanted to share, Edwin. I'm just so incredibly thrilled to be here in your midst and in the midst of the other trainers and um, really uh, available to support you in any way that I can. So. Thank you. Well, thanks. Thanks for saying that. And yeah, the I keep uh, trying, you know, trying to get it out there. And uh, I really see that this curriculum is needed. So, and you're all uh, trainers and have experience. And I think uh, that's really important that we find a way that we can work together and you know get uh, the importance of empathy and some ways of actually increasing empathy. You know, some tools out there. 
I will comment on your slideshow. I think it's a great beginning toward the uh, GoFundMe campaign or whatever you're going to do to get funded. I see this slideshow as almost there. Yeah, and thanks. A presentation uh, of what you have already done, the amazing amount of resources you have amassed. It's totally amazing. That was one of the intentions was to to uh, create a, a Kickstarter or a crowdfunding uh, presentation. So this is kind of the beginning of that. So this is so I'm really looking forward to any kind of feedback to help mm -hmm. you know kind of tweak it or uh, make it uh, more compelling. The only thought I had about that, and this is just me, was oh I would maybe take out the slightly most radical things like maybe the Occupy tent. Depending on who the audience you want to fund you is, <laughs> that was my only, my only thought. I had one other comment that'll uh, come out later when I share my curriculum. Uh, you've mentioned in our interactions before, kind of persistently, that you get these people together and they do listening circles or empathy circles, but it doesn't seem to build right. a committed community. And I will say that these the changes peer counseling groups that I have been doing, one thing they have is people get really committed. It may be only a handful of people, but they come once a week for 10 years or forever. Um, so I'll talk more in my presentation about that, but I, I want to throw that in. There's something there. Just in these little groups, people get really committed. So we could talk about yeah, that. Yeah, that's later. a huge part. That's been uh, that commitment is something that really comes up is how to get people committed. The the thing I'm looking at is creating a sort of an identity around empathy. That you know, being a Republican is an identity. Being a Democrat or being a progressive, can we have an identity of being of an empathic way of being, be an identity? So it becomes something that you're committed to as who you are. Yeah, you uh, can just have buttons that say, I'm a listener or something, <laughs> whatever it comes to be. Yeah, or I'm an, I, ideally it would be like I'm, the word like an empath, you know, but the empath's been kind of taken over by, uh, is kind of a negative, like I'm an empath has been someone who's like overwhelmed by feelings or too sensitive. And if we had an identity of empath as, Someone who's you know strong and solid and can listen to everybody and can facilitate you know mediate and and is creative. Then we'd have like an identity. Mm, that made me a but, little nervous because I think of the empaths myself being one as a kind of a select group, and so then people would say, "Okay, we'll let the empaths do it. <laughs> we'll let them have the job of being empathic." So. I might look for a different term. But anyway, that's a discussion we don't need to yeah, have well, now. How do you create an identity? I yeah. think that's, uh, that, that's just one idea I've been playing with. Mm -hmm. But I like the idea of buttons and bumper stickers and t-shirts. And... <laughs> we got the button. We got the... Ah. <laughs> that All right. was from uh, the design committee uh, from the design school at Stanford. So. Okay, any more or one, maybe one more question? Rosa? Sure, it's not so much a question, um, it's also an appreciation. I just want to say that even though I've been poking around your website for a while now and in email communication with you for, I don't know, maybe a year, um, I was just, I learned so much and I loved the photos. I love the documentation that you've been keeping of all the work that you've been doing. I thought it was a very strong and powerful and enjoyable presentation and just really appreciated it. I, I felt inspired, so mm. I'm just delighted to see it. Thank you.